Now, someone asks if uh, Finland would join NATO. So that's what this video is going to be about. And if you like the video, I hope you do like it. If you like it, I hope you will like it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, you should subscribe. It's not a difficult thing to do, and it means an awful lot. But thank you anyway. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so knowledge is power, so I'm going to tell you what I wikied about uh, Finland. And so in 1917, Finland became independent of the USSR. And in 1918 came the Finnish Civil War. Now, 1920, the Civil War came to an end with the Russian-Finnish Treaty of Tartu. And then in 1922, finally, the Finnish government closed the border. Now, in 1939, the Soviet Union's Red Army shelled their own Soviet village of Manila and blamed Finland using this false flag operation like used in Crimea, remember that, and the Donbass regions of Ukraine as a pretext to provoke the Winter War a few days later when the uh, USSR invaded Finland border areas just like they're doing now in, crime, in uh, Ukraine. Now, in 1940, the Winter War was concluded by signing of the Moscow Peace Treaty, and Finland ceded several border areas to the USSR, and a naval border was, a naval border was established. Now, 1941 to 1944, this was World War II, and the Continuation War for this area, where about half of the Finnish area uh, called uh, Karelia, Karelia, I believe it is, uh, plus Finland's fourth largest city, Vyborg, parts of Sala, and all of Petsamo were ceded to the Soviet Union. The new border severed rail lines and isolated many Karelian towns from Finland. The Soviet Union demanded emptying the territories first, okay? Finns were evacuated from the area and resettled. Almost nobody was willing to stay and be part of the Soviet Union. Um, Stalin made border zones free of Finnish peoples by transfers, by collectivization, and you may want to know what is collectivization or what it means specifically at that time. That meant that peasants, they were called peasants, worked together on large farms and most of the crops were given to the government at a low price to feed industrial workers. Okay, and then purges were also used. What are purges? They were targeted at certain ethnic minorities subjected to forced deportation, extreme repression, and the purge widely utilized imprisonment, torture, violent interrogation, and arbitrary execution. Then these areas were resettled by Soviet immigrants. In 1947, the land border was demarcated in the Treaty of Paris. In 1956, the Porkala naval base leased by the Soviet Union was returned to the Finnish government. As a note, on the Finnish side, there was a border zone that an entry was allowed only with a permit, but habitation was permitted and residents could continue living there. On the Soviet side, extensive electronic systems patrols. Um, uh, there were extensive electronic systems. There were patrols against es escapees. And uh, Soviet border surveillance began far from the border. The first surveillance was at railway stations monitoring suspicious traffic. Then Soviet border zone began at 120 kilometers or 75 miles from the border. A special permit was required for entry and the first line of control had electronic alarms. Number two, at 60 uh, kilometers or 37 miles was a raked sand strip to detect footprints and a thin uh, uh, alarmed tripwire. Then number three, at 20 kilometers, 12 miles, there was a three meter, which is 9.8 feet tall barbed wire fence. Uh, the top curved towards Soviet territory and the fence had an electronic alarm system, but it was not guarded and underground tunneling was possible. And then number four, finally, at the actual international border was a border vista. That is, what is a border vista? It's a man-made track of deforestation that demarcated portions of the border between the two nations. Finland did not protect illegal Russian border crossers. People tried to get into Finland, but they returned them to Soviet authorities. So that's what I know. Okay, so a viewer has asked a question, and I can't pronounce your name, so I'm going to have it printed across here. But um, will Finland join NATO? And uh, so uh, we'll see how that goes here. Will Finland join NATO? I really have no... Um, preconceived idea about this. So will Finland join NATO? The Hierophant. This is government. These are rules. This could be NATO. So will Finland join NATO is the question here. You know, um, in the piece that I just did that told you a little bit about the history, um, it just shows how ruthless uh, the, Russia, at that time the Soviet Union, I would presume there's some of that still in play. But you know, before we do too much, Let's just have a moment 
of meditation. Will Finland join NATO? Will Finland join NATO? Will Finland join NATO? What do you think? You think it'll happen? Will Finland join NATO? Let's do six cards and see how that goes. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Will Finland join NATO? Interesting question. A lot of people wonder that. Not, uh, no uh, people wonder more than Russia. Will Finland join NATO? Thank you for the question. The signifier for this is the, um, the sun. Okay, so this is um, shining a lot of light in on the subject. The sun is a bright, happy, promise of, I'm going to say protection, I'm going to say, if, if I didn't draw any of the cards, but this one I say, yeah, they're going to signify a card. Or maybe this is just representing what it means to join NATO, perhaps. Uh, the challenge to that is the King of Rods. So the King is uh, the very uh, top of that uh, suite uh, for uh, Rods or Wands. And uh, so the King has got a plan. Rods are plans, actions, forward movement. And so the challenge to this bright, um, uh, shining um, effect on this subject is uh, this great big plan. Still looking good that they might. The basis of the reading then is the Queen of Pentacles, the value. Okay, so this is uh, the value that Finland, I think, would have to uh, NATO. Passed to this reading, uh, strength. Well, look at that. So this is showing us the strength that Finland has uh, exhibited so far, and perhaps the strength they would bring to the table in that respect. The sky this reading is the Hierophant government. This whole thing, these, all these cards seem to be very centered on this subject. So the Hierophant is the government. This is the very highest position in the in the uh, layout. This is the rules by which a thing is governed, which would be NATO, which could be the government of Finland. And then the likely outcome, will Finland join NATO, is the Knight of Pentacles, the Knight of Worth. Okay, going to fight for his value. And if joining NATO is the best way to do that, I would say they probably will. I would say they probably will. We'll go over it again. So, will Finland join NATO? The signifier card right off the bat is the sun. Let's shine a great big light on this subject. And then the challenge to it is the king of rods uh, showing that we have a big, strong plan to get this done. The base of the whole thing with this queen of pentacles is the amount of value, I think, that uh, Finland would be for NATO. And then the uh, past of this reading of strength just uh, shows you that, yeah, it is a strong, strong, strong position they would have. In the sky, the hierophant, which is literally the rules by which the thing is, is run or governed and uh, so to me that's NATO and it's in the sky and it looks so that makes it look all of these cards so far are yes cards and uh, every single card on the table and then the final outcome with this knight of pentacles is um, you know really fighting for your value reduced to a knight not a queen not a king but not a page either so I would say I think maybe they will hey I'm going to show you the cards now hang on so this is the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. This is published by US Game Systems. And I really love these cards and they've got an interesting story behind them too. And there's a follow-up deck um, that I sometimes use uh, together with these. But uh, so they come in a, a typical, uh, just a little cardboard card box. It's fine. Um, the artist is David Palladini, who was born in Italy, but raised in the United States in Highland Park, Illinois. So that's a little bit interesting once you get to know the cards. And uh, the instruction book that comes with them is just a run-of-the-mill, uh, this card means this and that card means that kind of thing. Really nothing all very meaningful in here, and it's kind of printed really small. So there's all of that. The interesting thing about these cards is uh, what happened, David Palladini was just finishing up um, art school when, I forget who it was, someone approached him about doing uh, tarot cards. Um, and now David Palladini just recently died. This is 2000 and 21 in May, and he may have died three years ago or in that in that time span, so uh, 17, 2017 or something. And then, so then these were done at the beginning of his career, which would have been, put him in his uh, 20s, or late 20s, I would imagine. So you can see that these are very nice cards, very soft spirit, and very to the point. Uh, they're not hard to uh, interpret. <clears throat> and I lay these out 
like this so that you can get an idea of what a full deck looks like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards or or sees a lot of tarot cards. I do because I just like to collect them. I think they're, they're little pieces of art. <clears throat> but uh, this fellow uh, did these right out of art school and then he could never have imagined they would come such an integral, become such an integral part of tarot. And then later in his life he went ahead and um, and did an updated uh, deck. But these are the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. And uh, they're really great. I love them. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.